With the release of Planet Zoo on the 5th of November in 2019, we also got the Deluxe Upgrade Pack alongside it, which had three animals. And since then, we have received 15 in total DLCs, with the final um, DLC of 2023 coming in likely December of this year. So, these packs over the course of Planet Zoo's lifespan have Get, have had animals of various kinds, but have also sparked a little bit of um, what if these animals were something different um, for particular DLCs? Because some people weren't really too pleased with some of the additions over some more more highly requested animal suggestions for the game's um, further continuation. But um, let's see what these packs could have looked like if the animals were slightly different. I picked the ones that I felt could have been changed personally. Um, but feel free to leave your ideas down in the comments below. As I would love to see what you guys would have changed about the Planet Zoo DLCs. And what your preferred um, roster for each of those DLCs would be. So without further ado... Let's begin. Our first pack is the is the deluxe edition. So this this pack um, released alongside the base game and added three animals: the Komodo dragon, the pygmy hippopotamus, and the Thompson's gazelle. But if I were to change anything about this pack, it would be adding animals. So I would add the dromedary camel, as it had scenery in the base game. And even though deep diving hadn't been added yet, I would have added the emperor penguin. But um, yeah, basically just given some legacy species from Zoo Tycoon, as this is what the, these animals are. So Komodo dragon, I believe pygmy hippo was in Zoo Tycoon 2. Thompson's gazelle was also in... Zoo Tycoon 1, Dromedary Camel, and Emperor Penguin were also in Zoo Tycoon 1. So it would just be like a good nod to that previous um, series of games. Um, On to the first proper DLC, we have the Arctic Pack. So this pack released with four animals um, as, they, as the further structure of the Planet Zoo DLCs would include four um, habitat animals and one exhibit animal so um this is scenery packs at least but um this pack arrived with four animals the polar bear the reindeer the arctic wolf and the doll sheep the the latter two i would change for the arctic fox in the place of the arctic wolf and the much larger musk oxen in the place of the doll sheep that way we got um a few more mainstream Arctic animals. I mean, Arctic wolves are pretty mainstream, but doll sheep I actually hadn't heard of until this pack came out. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's always good to get some of the lesser known species in DLCs. I just feel the muskox would have been a much better pick. On to the next DLC that Plant Zoo released, we have the South America pack. So, this pack released with five animals. Um, setting the stage for the scenery pack format for the next several years. So we got four habitat animals and one exhibit animal. So we got the jaguar, um, South America's largest cat, the giant anteater, the llama, the Colombian white-faced capuchin, and the red-eyed tree frog. Um, if I were to change any animals in this pack, I would change the llama out for the um, capybara even though we did eventually get it in the Wetlands Owl Pack. If we just got it sooner, that would have been pretty cool. Um, and in the place of the Colombian White-Faced Capuchin, we have the Black and Gold Howler. So, um, yeah, just a, a larger monkey in the place of the Colombian White-Faced Capuchin that does have scenery in the base game. Hopefully we could get it soon. On to the third proper DLC, and one of the most special to me is the Australia Pack. I say it's special because I am... Um, an Australian myself, and was a little disappointed with the base game's Australian roster. That being the saltwater crocodile, the burrowing cockroach, eastern brown snake, and death adder. Um, all of which are cool animals in their own right, but Australia has a much larger diversity than 
just r reptiles and insects. And this pack uh, elaborated on that by giving us the koala, the, inc the incredibly iconic red kangaroo, the dingo, the southern cassowary, aka the most dangerous bird in the world, and the eastern blue tongue lizard, a subspecies of the common blue tongue lizard. Um, if I were to change any of these animals, um, as much as I love all of them, I would have saved dingo for later and brought in the Tasmanian devil in its place. Um, in the place of the southern cassowary, I would have picked the emu, just so to keep this pack more of the outback theme, as that seems to have been what it was going for, even though Tasmanian devils are certainly not from the outback, and dingo fills that a bit better and I mean koalas aren't really from the outback either but um, that's kind of the theme that was go that they were going for with it and in the place of the eastern blue tongue we have the in the instantly recognizable frill neck lizard um, we still don't have it yet but it would be great to see one day and the fourth and I think um, best selling pack of 2020 was the aquatic pack this pack introduced deep diving mechanics to many of the game's animals. Um, well, actually, hang on. Oh, no, it's just saltwater crocodile at the start, but then they gradually added more over the course of the next year. Um, so this pack released with five animals, the king penguin, the giant otter, the gray seal, the Kuvius dwarf caiman, and the diamondback terrapin. Um, if I were to change any of these animals, I would have... Swapped out the grey seal for the California sea lion. Then it's very marine park thematic, and you get a much more um, energetic pinniped. I mean, we did eventually get the California sea lion in North America. So, um, yeah, it, it was going to come into the game inevitably, I would say. And on to a game changing pack. The Southeast Asia Animal Pack. So the first pack that didn't include any new scenery apart from animal signs. And in the place of more scenery, we got instead more animals. So this pack gave us the Sun Bear, the Clouded Leopard, the Binturong, the Dole, the Malayan Tapir, North Sulawesi Barbarossa, the ah, I'm clicking the wrong button, um, the Proboscis Monkey, and the giant Malaysian leaf insect, all of which represent Southeast Asia very well, um, giving us a great diversity of different animals from the region. If I were to change any of them, I would probably have swapped out the doll for the Asian small clawed otter, that way we get a deep diving animal in this pack, but we did get it in the wetlands animal pack eventually, but um, I would have liked to see the doll in perhaps a greater Asia animal pack rather. Um, in the place of the proboscis monkey, the lyre gibbon, which is an animal I was actually speculating was going to be in the pack at the time. But, um, yeah, brocheation probably would have been in the game a lot earlier. But the proboscis monkey, given it's um, a little bit more endangered than the lyre gibbon, um, probably deserves this deserves the position a bit more. And in place of giant Malaysian leaf insect is my most requested exhibit animal, the king cobra. A incredible snake, the largest venomous snake in the world, and yeah, I, I honestly, re I, do, I really want to see it in the game, but we still haven't gotten it yet. It took us so long to get the desert horned viper, um, as we hadn't had a snake added since the base game, and there are lots of incredible snakes out there, like you got vine snakes, black mambas, as we'll get to in a second, gaboon vipers, eyelash vipers, green anacondas even. And Reticulate Python, which would have been another good alternative for this DLC. And, um, yeah. So, speaking of, the next DLC was, was the Africa pack. So, this pack added five animals, four habitat, one exhibit, giving players the meerkat, the fennec fox, the African penguin, the southern white rhinoceros, and the sacred scarab beetle. All four of the habitat animals I would not change for any amount of money. And I would just swap the, the scarab beetle out for the black mamba, an infamous snake of Africa that um, I can't recall. Does it give the most fatal bites in Africa of any snake? I think so. Its reputation is very large, so I imagine so. Um, 
On to the next pack, which is our second animal pack. We have the North America animal pack. So this DLC included seven habitat, one exhibit, with the North American beaver, the moose, the cougar, the American alligator, the blacktail prairie dog, the California sea lion, Arctic fox, and the American bullfrog. If I were to swap out any of these animals, I would swap out the Arctic Fox for the Wolverine and the American Bullfrog for the Alligator Snapping Turtle, another exhibit animal that's high on my wish list. And then the last DLC of 2021 um, was the Europe Pack, um, what many thought to have been our last continental DLC um, until our latest DLC this year. Um, added four habitat, one exhibit of a few different animals from the European continent. So we've got the Eurasian lynx, the Alpine ibex, the European badger, the European fallow deer, and the fire salamander. If I were to change any of these animals, I'd probably change the badger out for the red fox, though we did get the red fox eventually in the twilight pack. So yeah. On to wetlands, um, this was our first animal pack of 2022, and this gave us various animals from the wetlands of the world. So we've got the capybara, the platypus, the red crowned crane, spectacle caiman, Nile lechway, Asian small clawed otter, wild water buffalo, and the Danube crested newt. There are a couple of animals I would change out in this pack. Uh, Red Crown Crane for the Shoebill, the Spectacle Cayman for the Nile Crocodile, the Nile Lechway out for the Fishing Cat, um, as it, it, it would be a, a little bit more of an interesting animal to see. Even though it is another cat, it is a very specialized cat for living around water. And I would swap out the Danube Crested Newt for the Alligator Snapping Turtle, as this pack actually didn't have any North American animals, uh, rather surprisingly. On to the scenery pack of June of 2022, we got the conservation pack, an a, a pack full of highly requested animals. And we have the Shavosky horse, the Amor leopard, the Siamang, Scimitar horned oryx, and the Axolotl, or Axolotl, I think it's called. Um, yeah. And I think you can guess where this is going. I wouldn't swap any of these animals for the world. Like, they're all. They were all highly requested um, before this pack, and yeah, yeah, I'm really happy to have all of them in the game. Like, we were lacking another horse, um, we lacked a leopard, a true leopard, that is. Um, we finally got a gibbon, and it was the most unique of the gibbons. Um, we got our first extinct in the wild animal, and a little salamander with little gills on, it, on its head. So, yeah, and it's incredibly cute, and a common pet. I mean, that's unfortunately why it's endangered, like critically endangered because of the pet trade but um, and pollution and habitat loss, that too. But um, yeah, all these animals stayed the same as I think Conservation Pack had one of the most perfect rosters you could ever see in a Flat Zoo DLC. Um, on to Twilight Pack, one of my least favourites as I don't really celebrate Halloween and um, was m more hoping for a nocturnal animal pack with different animals so in this pack we got the raccoon the common wombat red fox striped skunk and the egyptian fruit bat um, i would keep the raccoon and wombat but i would swap out the red fox for the um eye eye which it it gives a more um halloweeny theme to this dlc as it's a very creepy looking animal but um, an endangered animal due to its creepy looks, unfortunately. Um, I'll swap out the striped skunk for a much more Halloween themed black and white animal, the Tasmanian Devil, as its ambience would have created a great atmosphere um, for, for your spooky zoos. And instead of the Egyptian fruit bat, I would have picked a more Halloween themed um, species of bat, the common vampire bat. And if that was a roster, I would certainly be much more happy with um, the Twilight Packers. Um, yeah, it is not my favorite DLC, but um, if it had these animals, I think it would be one of my favorites. Um, on to Grasslands Animal Pack, which 
brought us back to form, <laughs> thankfully. Um, I mean, it did change it a little bit as we then got a scenery pack at the start of the year, so it has changed a little bit. But we got the Grasslands Armor Pack, giving us the Nine Banded Armadillo, the Main Wolf, the Emu, the Caracal, Striped Hyena, Redneck Wallaby, Blue Wildebeest, and Butterflies, with the Cloud of Sulphur, European Peacock, Manlaeus Blue Morpho, Monarch, and Old World Swallowtail. And, um,. Yeah, this is one of my favourite packs, as it has so many highly requested animals in it, and so many animals that represent grasslands quite well. Um, so I would only change two of these animals, those being the two that are more associated with arid regions than anything else. So I would swap out the Caracal for the Serval, a, a cat known for living in grasslands, and the Striped Hyena out for the Secretary Bird, giving us a second bird in this DLC. And it is also it remains highly requested to this day. So if the secretary bird was in this pack, I think it would have been very good. And not to say that the pack isn't good right now, like it it's one of my favourite animal packs. If not my favourite animal pack, because yeah, it gave us so many amazing creatures. On to the first DLC of this year, twenty twenty three, um we got the tropical pack. A surprise to many, but a welcome one nonetheless. One of my favourite scenery packs is I love the Indonesian theme. I think it's very cool. Um, I've always wanted to build that sort of rainforest temple um, that is in the theme of Indonesia. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we got five animals in this pack. We got the La Gibbon, the Fusa, the Red River Hog, the Asian Water Monitor, and the Brown Throated Sloth, many of which are uh, highly requested by the community. Age of Water Monitor, not so much, but um, unfortunately for the monitor, even though it is probably one of the most beautiful animals we've ever gotten in the game with its incredible detail, I would swap it out for the South American Kawati as this pack was kind of lacking in South American animals. And I would swap out the Brown Throat Sloth for the much more widespread in captivity Lin Linnaeus' Two-Toed Sloth. So, um, I mean, we may get the Linnaeus' Two-Toed Sloth in a pack in the future, but um, yeah, I think the Linnaeus' would have been a much better pick as they are very widespread in captivity. On to the ar Arid Animal Pack. Yeah, um, this one is controversial to say the least, given its um, large amount of hoof stock, but honestly, <laughs> I honestly don't mind at all. But um, because I know all the all the animals in this pack and know their conservation statuses and how important they are, so um, I wasn't really too miffed about it. But I know several people were, as there were a lot of um, in their minds better picks, and I can honestly see their point. So I provided my own selection. So the original roster for this pack consisted of the dromedary camel, the adax, sand cat. Dharma Gazelle, Somali Wild Ass, African Crested Porcupine, Black Rhinoceros, and the Desert Horned Viper. So if I were to change any of these animals, I would change the Dharma Gazelle out for the Rock Hyrax, the Somali Wild Ass out for the Greater Roadrunner, the Black Rhino, as much as I love him, out for the Hammer Drives Baboon, and the Desert Horned Viper out for the Budragar, as this pack didn't have an Australian animal, so I thought I'd give them one. So, yeah, Budrigar is a hardy little bird and a common pet as well. And given how many of them are bred in captivity and in people's homes, um, they have a wide range of colour variations. So that would have been an interesting sight to see in, in your walkthrough exhibits. Head on to our last and latest DLC. We have the Oceania pack. So this pack is one of my favourite scenery packs. Again, like this this year's scenery packs have been top tier for me. So um, this pack gave us five animals from the Oceanian region, many of which are highly requested by the community. So we got the North Island Brown Kiwi, finally. The Tasmanian Devil, finally. The, the ah, kicking on the wrong button. The Little Penguin, finally. The Quokka, I guess finally. I mean, they're very cute. And the Spectacle Flying Fox. I mean, no one was really asking for it, but I love the Spectacle Flying Fox personally, as I've seen them in real life, and 
yeah, it's very cool to have a diurnal bat. But I would change out the quokka for the Goodfellows tree kangaroo, as it is much higher on the wish list. And many people have kind of lost hope for the tree kangaroo, given that we covered most of the areas that it would be um, appliable to. So, yeah. Many people are losing hope, but don't lose hope too soon because there are still open windows for them. And for the exhibit animal, I would have changed out for the rainbow lorikeet as when um, Frontier was doing the mocktail stream, uh, they made one that had nectar in it and no one no one expected fruit bat, or flying fox in this case. Um, many people were expecting a rainbow lorikeet as they are known for feeding voraciously on nectar but unfortunately that didn't come to fruition but um yeah the pack's great nonetheless given us several animals from the oceanian region that were highly requested by the community and are uh, just a a nice thing to see in a game such as this and that would have to conclude um this video so let me know what you guys would change about the Plan Zoo DLCs, and I will be doing a little bit more um, Plan Zoo in-game gameplay when I can find the time, um, as I haven't really done any for a while. But um, let me know on things I could build, and I, I'm thinking of doing a realistic zoo build, so making a realistic looking zoo with the animals that we currently have. So that's that's my original plan, but after that. Um, We'll see. But I will have to find time to um, build in the game, of course, as I'm coming out of the holidays. So uh, it'll be business as usual. Uh, busy times ahead. But other than that, uh, I'll see you in the next video, whenever that will be. But um, with that, yeah, I'll see you later, guys. Bye-bye.